Hello everyone, Eleanor Koenig is back and in the following we're going to talk about a workflow for PDFs that will make you actually want to read research papers, even if you're just an amateur academic. As a reminder, the word amateur came from amare in Latin, which means to love. So if you love learning, but you don't have to worry about overly rigorous academic citations, reference managers can still be useful for note taking. Let's find out how. Hey everyone. Back for round two with Eleanor. Eleanor, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. It's been a good day. Very nice. So the first one we covered was great. We're looking at how to take stuff and make something professionally with it. And then this is really covering a reference manager and, and dealing with how to collect materials, I guess, using Zotero. And there's a lot of talk about Zotero right now. And I, and I thought this might be a good way. And you thought so too, that we could just maybe, I, I could see what you do and quiz you as you go along and we can kind of see how can how can people out there use this software why would they want to i'm looking at zotero as a website and they say it's a free easy to use tool to help you collect organize cite and share research okay so that's interesting yeah zotero um i found out about it through obsidian like i i don't I don't run in academic circles. My my master's degree is comfortably behind me and my master's degree f wasn't very hard. So I didn't have to do a lot with reference managers or anything. But uh, since I've been writing more with Obsidian and I've, I've been doing more more knowledge work and just learning more and being able to manage it, I've, I've found myself in a position where having a smoother workflow with annotations and note-taking uh, has been beneficial. And Argentina gave a really great community talk, I think last week, actually exactly a week ago, and it uh, it changed my life. So uh, <laughs> already I've I've gotten so much value out of Zotero, and um, it, it it seems like the sort of thing on the surface where a lot of people would look at it and go, I don't need that. That's not for me. That's some, not something I need, because a lot of the sort of talk around it is very academic in nature. But it's it's great for so many things that I think it's worth looking at for a non-academic purpose. Like, I mean, I've been, I've been using it for websites even. It's, it's amazing. It's a great tool. And the, the plugins that allow you to take annotations from a PDF and just plop them right into your vault, perfectly fo formatted, perfectly organized with all of your, your, your preferred bolding, your preferred metadata, and it flows right into everything the data view can do. So it's, it's just been really helpful for me personally. And I think it'll be helpful yeah. for other people. I think it'll be helpful for, for me too, because I kind of skew on that side. I, I'm not an academic, uh, I'm an amateur. And I'll read, yeah, I just, I, I love, you know, the, the certain things and topics sometimes. So I'll open up a research paper. What do I do with that? And so Zotero is intimidating, but what I'm hoping for is to feel a little bit less intimidated by it, you know, kind of seeing how can people who don't make a living through Zotero itself, like the academic side of things, but how can we still get value out of that and, and using reference managers to feed, you know, the rest of the system too. So I'm super excited. Yeah, I think it, it definitely has a learning curve. I remember the first time I sort of tried to mess with it. I was like, mm, this is a lot. But the Obsidian community helped us figure out Obsidian, and they also helped me figure out Zotero. So I'm sort of I'm happy to help you figure out Zotero, so we can sort of <laughs> spread the spread the knowledge. Yeah, Welcome absolutely. to the behind the scenes with Eleanor teaching Nick how Zotero works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that community is great, by the way. It's just it's so nice. People yeah. are so nice. I, I could not have done this if people had not held my hand. So, and it, it's so easy when you, when you sort of like, oh, that's all you have to do. But once you get it set up, so the, the mm -hmm. setup is the hard part. So I guess, we uh, jump yeah, in? Let's, yeah, let's dive in. Okay. Let me figure out how okay. to share my screen and then we'll, uh, we'll go. All right. Before okay. we're done, I'm going to finish both of these. That's, it's a little hot where I'm at. So it's like, cool down. Got ice and bow. I believe in you. All Ooh, right. So this. This is my, I know the last time we talked, I had literally just downloaded and installed Data View that day. And let me tell you, in the last month, I have been integrating it a lot. It's been incredibly helpful. And it, it hasn't, I haven't had to go back and refactor a lot. I haven't had to make a lot of changes to what I had done in order to get a lot of use out of it. But as I'm going, I'm, I'm noticing that I'm using it more and more. So this is my references map of Very content. So these are, let me show you the data view version. These are my references with summaries. These are the things that I have sat down and actually made a summary for, which hasn't been much, mostly because when you have entire article that you've edited, like you, you don't, you don't 
annotate like 17 articles in a day, right? Like you, you got to sit with it. You got to pull the pieces out. So I've done this for two of them. And this one's commented out. This is just a way to, you can plop this at the bottom of um, this query right here. This is a table with the date and the summary and the tag and all, but it only pulls a particular one. So if I uncomment this, you'll see. If I'm looking just for the ones that match my query of a tag about textiles. So I use this for filling in my maps of content. I can query, once this is longer, I'll be able to query everything that is about economics or everything that talks about domestication. And then I can sort of double check and make sure I didn't miss anything when I'm making these maps of content. Hmm. So that's, I know we had talked last time about how to use data view for maps of content. And that's how I personally have been doing it. Why isn't this working? Oh, that's very strange. So in, in oh, my mind, the uh, data view is, is super powerful and awesome. And it falls under, if, if, if I can call it this, but like the power users side of things. So not <laughs> yeah. everyone would use it, but it is super powerful. And there are use cases and we can fall into the pitfalls like of using it and just like trying to, you know, metadata everything. But there, I mean, as you, as we're seeing right here, you're using it in a really interesting way, because even though you're like a writer first and foremost, that involves research. Like that involves like a, a big, you know, spigot of information coming in. And so you're using it in a way to, to filter and sort and, and make sure you can find what you're looking for. Is that? Yeah. Yeah. And in fact, I was looking into these, these two things for research for my book. I was interested in, like I do, I do a lot with the bronze age. So I was interested in, um, I've been digging into domestication and the history of ancient civilizations and how they interacted with animals because I'm trying to make sure I get the, I, I get that relationship, right? Like we have a lot of, of sort of misinformation about how early humans interacted with their sheep and how they interacted with their, their dogs and stuff. So I've been trying to make sure I get that right. So I've been reading a lot of stuff about bronze age, you know, domestication of the sheep and, and how that domestication process happened. And in fact, uh, I recently wrote an article about there's a, there's a, a lot of argument about the domestication of the horse and whether or not people rode horses um, before they like hitched them to carts, like how horses first got used. So I've been deep in that rabbit hole because I'm trying to figure out how early horses would have been domesticated because that's something that happens during the course of my book. You don't want to, you don't want to mess that up. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so Zotero. So I actually uh, have done more with Zotero than just these two articles. These are the ones that I've done most recently. But if we click here, I have aliased this to a, what's called a site key. And it, it's not a very friendly title, um, but a lot of academics will actually title their references with the site key instead of the title of the actual piece. So like here are some of my journal articles and like here's the PDFs and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I, I find the site key to be less readable. Like hot couture bronze doesn't it's tell yeah it's getting me in, much. in the way. <laughs> yeah and like the thick of research it's getting in the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like if you know if if you're if you're an academic it absolutely makes sense to have everything formatted neatly. But I'm not an academic. I just want to know the title. But I do have it as an alias That's and right. I do that because there's this nifty citations plugin that will basically query against your Zotero database. So if I am making a daily note, I will do something like this where I will make a note to myself that I read this thing. So for example, I can insert a citation and then even if I haven't already made a note about it, if I have a Zotero entry, so if it's something that I've dumped into my Zotero, even if it's not an Obsidian yet, as something other than a, as a PDF, this will let my backlinks work. So if I hmm. <clears throat> do it with the origin, the range of the link, so it'll do it kind of this way, which I don't love, but I can, like, that's easy to fix, right? So now I have a link to the site key and that won't change. So when I do get around to fully processing this note about the range of the Eskimo lamp, which is a 
moderately offensive title, but note that it was written in like 1898. When I, when I finish processing that note, it will appear in my articles with the alias so that it would show up on the backlinks. Does that make sense? A little bit. I, I may have lost initially when you input that link and it had the at sign with the wiki yeah. link. So if we just take it back there, where did yeah. that initially come from? So you had so, already created um, a note? It's a, it's the citations plugin. Okay. So this is an Obsidian plugin, citations. Yeah. And this allows you, What what is it doing, by the way? I, I have it installed, but I haven't played with it. So the citations <laughs> plugin. You're like, oh, I have to explain this. <laughs> I I expected this to be a lot of like, oh, right. Um, which is why we're doing it this way, where you ask me questions, because I, I could not possibly like do it as a walkthrough. I've, I've forgotten so many things that I've done. So this will basically query against my list of site keys, which is a JSON file that, Z that the Zotero will make for me. So um, you have Zotero, you find this file, this JSON file, it's somewhere, like you'll find it. And then I mean, you, you tell it, it where to go. There's a okay. setting and, and Kat's walkthrough covers this. Um, so Kat has a walkthrough, which we will absolutely link to in the link of this description yeah. that, that will go yeah. through how to install all of this. Uh, okay. It's very, like it's, it's very broken down. I didn't have any problems following it. So that's one of the reasons that I don't want to like. Yeah. So we won't go thing. into the technical, yeah. but yeah, just if you're watching, we have the link to lack cat's walk, walk through, but what we're doing is we're finding this, this file, wherever it exists and we're plopping it in here. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it can, uh, communicate with Zotero, right? Yes. And so, so like my Zotero uses folders in my vault and I can show you that in a second. And then the citation plugin, you tell it where your liter literature notes go, and then you can set up this template, which I can probably, yeah, I can, I can actually change that so that it doesn't have that horrible little. Oh, cool. I <laughs> watch as Eleanor is lazy and doesn't do things the way that she should do there. So now it's just a site key. And nice. in fact, I could probably do it so that it links to the title instead. Now then I don't even have to worry yeah. about the psyche. <laughs> That's so much more flexible than I realized. I love it when that happens. These plugin developers are amazing. Yeah. Wow. So this is this is really good. I'm, I'm taking note of this. Like this is if you're watching, take a screenshot right now because this is uh, the stuff that then you can add to the citations plugin and see if that works for you. Yeah, that's cool. You could do all this neat stuff. This is helpful. I'm like two steps behind, maybe even like 10 when it comes to this. So it's, it's nice to see how you're covering, but please proceed with where you, where you were. Yeah, no, to be clear, I figured this out mostly like three days ago. I, I want to set expectations. This is Nick and I figuring out how this works. This is not a tutorial. This is, <laughs> this is a showcase. <laughs> welcome to the, uh, welcome to the, the back end of things. Yeah. The show and tell behind the scenes of Nick and Eleanor figuring out how things work. <laughs> All right. So one of the things I did today was read through this hot kitcher bronze age thing. I also read through this. So let's look at this. This, like I said, has the alias, but this is how I got it. This is my MD notes default template and I will get into what MD notes is in a minute. Things to note, the alias is the site key, which apparently I don't like super need, but, but I, I can see why it will be useful to have this because this is the thing that doesn't change. Like even if I go and like slightly mess with something, it'll, it'll be fine. Um, and I actually don't need this anymore because I moved the date. I like to have the date up here, mostly for data view. Um, I, there's a lot of information that academics use that I don't think is important. Like, I don't need to know what journal this comes from. I, I don't care. I don't know if that makes me a bad person, but I don't care what journalist was published in. I, I, it's relevant for people who are trying to make sure that, you know, it came from Scientific American and not something that's terrible. It's relevant for people who are trying to figure out, like, you know, what, what journals, they should, like, there are reasons to do it. I just, I, the, the longest, 
hardest thing I had to do in order to make Zotero work for me was getting rid of extra information, not so much trying to find the information because academics care about so much more than I care about. I just want my annotations, <laughs> the ability to go find it again, and yeah. like a list of things. Uh, I'm not sure if the recording will capture, but I, I did a Zoom clap because that's that's really important not to over metadata if you don't have the need. You know, there's this sense that, oh, well, I might need this someday maybe, but that's the type of stuff that just drowns you out in noise and, and false positives and distracts you. Whenever you're trying to work on something, it's always there and it's like, it's taking away energy. So being able to whittle things away is a skill and it will serve you well. So that, that's yeah. great to see that. Yeah, so like, I don't, I don't need the abstract. I don't need how many pages. I don't need to know like which blog it comes from. I don't need to know the ISBN number. I don't, that's not important to me. What is important to me is I can open it in Zotero if I ever do need the metadata, right? Like what, you don't need to store your information in two places. You, you just, you, not, not, like not really. I know what you mean. Like I, I, that's a little bit silly because I'm obviously like storing my notes in two places, but like for metadata. Yeah, like, for metadata especially. Yeah, I know what you mean. Like as a, as a question of storage. And then I can also click and just open my, it shot up on the other screen, but it, I can open the actual PDF if I want. Now, you, there are a lot of cool things that you can also do. You can tell it to give you, and this is one of the things I actually deleted. You can tell it to give you the location after every single block quote, like it'll give you a link after everything to open up right into where in the PDF, like which page it came from. And, and if you are someone not me, maybe you will care to do that. But I found it very messy. And one of the things that I asked for help with was how do I make this go away? Oh, interesting. Okay. Mm -hmm. So like it, it, the, the default is that it will open up in a like completely different, like I, I worked really hard to make it look like this, but um, the notes in, in the default will give you the page number for everything. And it, it will give you the, uh, it will give you after, and it'll be a link. And there's like a whole bunch of extra information, but I, I'm not like, these are, these are journal articles. They're not that long. Knowing that it's on page 13 is enough for me. Like this is, it goes from page 13 to page 19. I, it, it was clutter. So I just, I wanted to get rid of as much clutter as I could. And the other thing that I did to change it from the default was I added my handy dandy headers. I know you remember from last time, I really like headers. This does not ship with sort of the default exportation. I had to figure out how to do that with a lot of very kind help and handholding from Cat in Argentina in the Discord. Seriously, like the, the lesson that you take from this should be when you figure out exactly what you want yours to look like that's different from mine and different from Cat's, just ask. Like, just, just ask. Like figure out what you can do and ask for help. Quick question. <laughs> Hopefully this is an easy one to on that point. When you're saying what it can look like, are you changing it? So the places you change it, um, the citations plug-in pop-up that you showed Mm -hmm. like that that has like templatey stuff and then yep. right here in the md notes default template is that is mm -hmm. that where you're changing these things yes absolutely so i am the one that decided to make this look like this the actual md notes template the default ones um uh, let me find it you know if i were if i were smarter i would have had this up already but womp womp yeah. <laughs> All right so here are the md notes templates that it sort of ships with you don't have to do anything with them if you don't want to. Like, I mean, it, it, it works out of the box. What I did was a lot of customization. So the the neat thing here is it comes with this MD Notes default template. And then I will split screen this so you can see how I changed it. So normally it's just the title. And then there's a bunch of like metadata that like, it'll make two different files for you. And then it'll tell you the file names of all of that stuff. And then it'll give you these Zotero links. So if you'll notice, like I kept some of that, right? Like I, I still have a title. I still have the local library. And mm -hmm. then there's this notes thing is all of the like actual extracted annotations and stuff. Um, okay. That's the default. As you can see, I super don't care about like the I don't want multiple files for this. I understand why academics would, but I like that's that's too that's too much for me yeah. for what I'm doing. So 
normally it would come with all of this metadata. Here's the date and the date you downloaded it and then the gotcha. like related things. And here's like a bunch of extra tags. And then here's all of the, like, here's the abstract. And, and I, I just, I don't mm -hmm. want that. Abstracts are great. Don't get me wrong, but I, I prefer to write my own summaries because the things I care about are not the things that the researcher cared about, like 80% uh, of the mm, time. Yeah. <laughs> so this is pretty great. So the way, by the way, that's a really cool uh, Git book that uh, Argentina set up. But it's, it looks like to me then that it, it's set up uh, for the academic, for the researcher. Which makes which sense. Which is fine. <laughs> yeah, it, totally, totally. But it has the flexibility built in where you just whittle away until you kind of find out what you need. And so between between here and what Eleanor has, somewhere the truth lies for you. Like, you know, or even further, you know, whittle away even more than what you put in here. Who knows? But yeah, you have that flexibility. So that, that's cool. I, I see, I actually feel quite empowered just knowing that how I can change the citations plugin and the MD notes uh, template. Yeah, and there's a really great thing somewhere about the placeholders. So here are all the, here are all the things you could have. You can have whether, like you can tell it, is this a book? Is this a, a journal article? Is this a website? Like it'll tell you, so Zotero lets you put things in collections. They're, uh, they're like Gmail folders. They're like secretly tags, but not officially tags. Gotcha. By which I mean it could be in more than one folder at a time. It's it's like the it's the perfect kind of folder. It's like that beautiful in between of it acts like a folder and also acts like a tag. It's what everything should be. <laughs> <laughs> uh, none of mine are in two folders because I'm a very hierarchical thinker. We've met me, right? But but a lot of people would like put uh, so sanitation and wastewater technologies in uh, Harappa and the Indus Valley. Like some people would put that in both Harappa, Indus Valley, sanitation and infrastructure, right? Like you could have collections for all of those things. You could have, and then also like Bronze Age and, and also like Asia, right? Like you could have collections for all of those things. And that would make sense. Or, or you could have, um, some people will have a collection for every paper they write. And so it's like, you might use the same article for multiple papers. Does that make sense? It does. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Yeah, <laughs> it does. Yeah. I mean, for me, it's the Gmail labels and, and how I use those label folders to, to add multiple tag like label folders to each one. So this is good. Okay. I'm not sure where you're going to go. Eventually I'm curious where the site key comes in from Zotero side, but yeah. Oh, okay. So let's talk, let's talk Zotero for real, not just my obsidian involved, right? So Zotero has this thing where it's an add-on, which is, is basically a plugin. So in order to make this like work, you need to have three plugins. You need better bib text is where you get the site key from. And it like sort of automatically does some bibliography thing in the background that, that is magic and does stuff. And then uh, there's Zot file, which does a lot of the um, the PDF. Like so, oh, so the cool thing that Zotero does um, is there's a web clipper, and with the web clipper, I just go and say I want this in my list of stuff. It's like a little, it's a browser extension, and then it will plop an entire website or article, or I think you can even do it with YouTube videos. If that's not too meta, maybe I'll try and like do it on one of the YouTube videos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and then it just, it like, it, it links up with Zotero on your computer and it will just magically import it and rename it and pull all of the metadata for you. Like I, I don't, I'm not, I didn't, I didn't find this stuff myself. Or like, I don't, I don't have to, I don't care, <laughs> but it's useful yeah. to have. Like left to my own devices, I would not take the time to actually fill in all of the things, but it's nice to have the ability to just go to this URL and then here's the like actual journal thing. Okay. So I guess let's, let's start from a new thing, right? So I'm going to go find an interesting thing. And this is, um, this is research rabbit. I think it's still an alpha. I'm going to give Nick a like invite code so that you guys can kind of jump the queue. I think if you're interested, but this is, um, this is something that I use to find articles that are related to books that I liked. So I can sort of see who disagreed with them because I don't love the feeling of reading something that was written in 2010 and not realizing that sometime in the last 10 years, the entire landscape of research has shifted. It's not a yes. great feeling. I don't 
like it because I'm not an academic, right? And, and, and research changes so fast and like the, the state of play and like people just agree with stuff. And like, I just, I like to know what the, what the meta is. So I can find um, everyone that cited it. 19 people cited this book I read and wrote an article about. Mm -hmm. And let's see what we've got. Let's just export the whole thing. And one of those things, I, I know so little on the academic world, but even though it's been cited a lot, it doesn't mean anything because I, I just, I, I guess when I was doing a lot of research into self-discipline slash willpower, uh, this was uh, almost the better half of a decade ago, there was this oft, often, often cited article, like over 500 citations. And it turns out that it could not be replicated reliably. And it, uh, you know, so you see that a lot. I know replication is a problem. So it's wild though, to see all the citations that have been mentioned that easily. Uh, it just, this blows my mind, by the way, research rabbit. Yeah. And then, so you get this, you get what's called a, a, a dot bib file. I don't know if you can see it. I can see that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then literally all I do is I go into Zotero and I one of these will let me import them. So Zotero, I think being open source, it, it's funny, we have to install these plugins that seem to give it core functionality, like better BibTech and um, some, you know, the other two. Um, yeah. At least better BibTech seems like it's a really should be baked into the core. But you know, for whatever reason, it isn't. It's open source, though, which is awesome that it's even a resource that's available. Okay, so you found it? Is that? It did. It was, it was in the file import, like. Should I should have done that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so not in here. It's in my downloads. Boom. So it'll make it into new collection, which is useful. And then uh, this little pin means that the site the site key can't change. So this is the site key that it gets imported with. Uh, this is like what Research Rabbit like gave me. You'll note that it's a different format than I used. Yeah. Uh oh. Which is fine. I, I, I'm gonna fix it. But uh, the reason for this is that like most people's cite keys don't bother with the title. So like when you're writing a paper, usually you just cite the author and the year because that's all you need in order to find it. Like this is sort of like what you would do in that little parentheses in I guess I don't know MLA Chicago whatever. Oh, because this is a reference manager, and like honestly, what you're like most supposed to be able to use this for, like I, I'm not using Zotero for what it's for. I want to be very clear. Zotero is good at automatically creating bibliographies, and there's like a way to to like make it give you yes, yeah, so, like you can get you can get it in in like you can copy the the like reference citation thing in mm -hmm. Chicago or APA. Like you can here like. That's what it's for. Do you see how nice that, like, I don't know if you remember having to like format all of your citations in college. Like, didn't that suck? Yeah, it, it sucked majorly. Right, so like you, you can do that with a click. Isn't that amazing? That's what Zotero's for. Yeah. That's <laughs> Watch for. as we continue to, to not. Use it properly. <laughs> not at all. No. So that's why like all of the stuff that isn't baked in isn't baked in because it's not what it's for. It's It's for. Put it like outputting all of your citations into whichever format the journal you're submitting to wants it in. Like, okay, that's, that's what it's for. <laughs> that, <laughs> just okay, people. <laughs> that's fair. That is fair. <laughs> yeah, like it's it's meant for uh, like I have a collection of every article that I'm using for this paper, and then at the end of it, I copy all of that, and it out it spits out a bibliography. And That's if, fair, to put it in that perspective. Yeah, and if I were in college still, or getting my master's degree, or pursuing a PhD, or you know, writing papers professionally that had to get submitted to articles, you know, like to, to journal, like people who who care about my sources, mm -hmm. absolutely that would be valuable. But the people I am sharing my stuff with are happy with a link. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, right? Like, I, you know, I. I cite my sources, but I don't do it in a formal way. I, I do it with a link. So I'm I'm able to ignore like 90% of what Zotero is for. And I imagine that most of the people who are doing the linking your thinking stuff or watching this or hanging out in Obsidian are like not trying to have formal bibliographies for everything they do and caring about whether or not there's a distinction between the Chicago and the APA and the MLA styles. Mm-hmm. 
So that's why this is the default site key. But I prefer slightly more context because I don't care what Fox did in 2000. Like that's not meaningful to me. So I like to unpin them. And okay. then do you see how it just like magically formatted into a format that's that was, useful? That was like, wow, that was pretty, that was cool. pretty cool. You know, I mean, even, even to have it display like that gives you a little tingle. It, instead of just like a boof, it's like, and it's like, yeah, you know, yeah. you see it happening. It's very nice. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> so unfortunately, you'll note that these don't have, these don't have PDFs. They don't have any attachments. Uh, and I'm going to pause here and note that I chose which things I want to see here. So uh, you you can change this. Like, so all of these are journal articles, but like, I, I don't find that useful. A lot of people will find the publisher useful, but I don't. So like, there are other things that you can add that I have chosen not to. I care about the date. I care about who made it. And I like to have the site key available to me and the, the title. That's is funny. The, so. the, the column is called creator as like so not like writer or public well yeah because you can do youtube videos with this you can do you could probably do podcasts like it, it, it's not just for academic papers you, mm. I, you i did it with a website one of these is a website uh so you see how these have little icons okay this is a book uh this is a website this is a journal article i I don't watch many YouTube videos. I'm a terrible person <laughs> Make, sitting here making a YouTube video. I'm just not an audiovisual learner. Oh, hey, yeah. Like I, I, I'm, no, I'm just I, not, uh, it's not how I process information. <laughs> YouTube's a funny place. Uh, I have to say, uh, re it's amazing how it's matured as a platform where if you want to find stuff that's educational, you could. I, I mean, I understand learning styles and everything, but it's, it's really wild how if you get on the right, if you find the right channels, it's like, whoa, I'm learning a lot. But um, it's easy also to take that a little bit too far. So yeah. tangent. I actually, over. I was I was watching a YouTube video the other day, and I I really was like I was excited about it. It was it, it actually covered Bronze Age domestication of horses. It was like I was ready, and I was watching it. It was really well done, and all of the information came from a book I had just finished. <laughs> so I wound up commenting something like, "This is a great companion video to to whatever book it was." It was uh, I can tell you. It was the domestication of something, something. It was, it was this one. It was The Horse, the Wheel, and Language by David Anthony. I was like, this is a great companion video to that. And he was like, yeah, I got a lot of information from it. And I was like, yeah, I can tell. Yeah, but <laughs> it, was a, it was a five minute YouTube video and a, a textbook this thick. So, mm -hmm. you know, like, I, I'm glad the YouTube video exists. Just, I'm, I'm the kind of person who sat down with the, with the, with the textbook and later on i i have to i have to point you to a resource that i found a lot of, of fun from but where they they take assassin's creed video game right um and one of the worlds explored like you know the city of alexandria and all these ancient cities and so they're talking about them in really uh, sophisticated like historical terms but I've they're using that, that imagery oh right yeah okay <laughs> i've shown that in class uh i the the one for athens um i actually it's yeah. <laughs> It's one of the things I introduce um, Greek democracy with, and we do a whole thing where they have to pull out to, and take notes on it and, and talk about how they can use that as a, as a source for uh, making inferences about the nature of democracy in Greece. It's like, you're right. It's a great resource. I love it. The Assassin's Creed people are fantastic. I'm, I'm so happy that, you, uh, that, I, that I understand it's being used. Uh, to yeah, teach, no, I, I have absolutely shown teach. it multiple years in class. Uh, it's, it's, it's a wonderful resource. The, the, the thing with Pericles getting, uh, getting fruit shown, thrown at him is... is <laughs> nice. Uh, okay, where were we? Zotero. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry to the watchers for our incredible derailments. But um, so I don't know if this is going to work because I I didn't like pretest this. But uh, I mean, like I find available PDFs works, but I don't know if these are open access. But uh, if you right click all of the the things from the bib bibliography file um, and find available PDFs, it will just search the internet for you to see if any of them are open access and available. The odds so, aren't always great because a lot of research is not open access and available. So, so this did find three open access PDFs, which I think is cool. So I am going to move these into my open access collection. I'm going to move the ones that are not open access into my restricted folder. And then I'm just going to delete this collection because it's mm. no longer useful. 
So now we have a bunch of stuff. This is in a language I do not understand. So I'm going to delete it because it is not useful to me. And then let me, <laughs> I should have done this a uh, second. So let's see what some of these were. Covenant International, I think this one was Israel and the Assyrians. Zotero, Israel and the Assyrians. All right, here we go. This probably came from that. Utopian moment, Solomon, the Queen of Sheba, and the negotiation, and the utopia, and some other stuff. Okay, so this is about negotiation, probably in the Bible. And the cool thing that Zotfile did is this is now in my vault. Okay. Zot file, we, I, which I don't know if we've mentioned. So we did better to bib tech. We've done MD notes, citations, and Zot file. Right. So it, like from literally just from that bibliography file that I got off of Research Rabbit, I, I imported the whole thing into, um, into Zotero. And like you can go through and delete whichever ones you don't want. And like you could have, I, I could have just unselected the right. I was just proving a point. Yeah. So you, mm -hmm. you pick which ones you want, and then it'll make a bit file of the ones that you checked. So don't feel like you have to, like, I, I could have done a better job of checking which ones were, were in English first. But, you know, it's hard to think of everything when you're on camera. Hi, folks. <laughs> so Zotfile um, manages that for me. I have given it my custom location, which is my PDFs folder in my docs vault. Mm. I have assigned the renaming rules. So this is not what it was originally named as a PDF. That file could then rename it according to the naming structure that I prefer using these, I can't zoom in, but it's the, the percentage A like template thing. It'll uh -huh. give you the, the author last name, you can use the year, you can use the time, you can use the journal. There are um, more things that they're, they're called wildcards, but like you can tell it how you want the name to be. So if you want the PDF to be named the site key, you can do that. If you just want it to be the title, you can do that. If you want it to be the title and the year, you can do that. If you want to add parentheses around the year, you can do that. Um, Very nice. Zot yes. file is advanced PDF management for Zotero. <laughs> it's true. It's true. It is, it is moderately advanced. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, yeah. oh, but, but, but it's good. So, so you've yeah. settled on, did, did you switch up what your preferences are? I just want the title. Um, okay. I like it to just be the title by the author. Gotcha. Cool. And uh, wow, I find it's right there. Useful. All the PDFs are right there in uh, Obsidian. Do you? So yeah. what do you do? Are we at the point where if I don't want to break the flow where you're at, but what do you do with those PDFs within Obsidian? Ah, it, like in Obsidian, nothing. But um, I have a tablet. And I have set my tablet to sync my vault because my, my obsidian vault is um, my, it's like, it's like a root thing in my documents. Like uh, you can see, like, these are all, like, I have my taxes in my obsidian vault. Like my, yeah, it's like, my, it's, it is like my root here. Dropbox folder. It's my everything. Like I, mm -hmm. I have, I have my medical paperwork is in here. Like I, I, I sync the whole thing. We, um, you have a full you have a whole folder for people you've dated i see so that's that's interesting no, no 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 i have i'm kidding <laughs> <laughs> my uh so uh the reason that, that would have been plausible is that uh my husband and i joke i i tell time in boyfriends so i don't Ooh. remember the year that things happened like oh yeah back when i was dating jeff or oh yeah back when i was dating yeah. sean <laughs> and now that my husband like have a baby he's like we're like we're gonna be married for a long time like eventually that like the dating system of one like you know of, of which boyfriend you were dating in that you know one to three year period is not going to be a useful metric of when a thing happened and i was like oh but it's you know when our son was a baby and when he was a toddler and when he was in preschool and like this is gonna work fine for me because i um i'm terrible at remembering numbers i like i it took me three or four years to remember my husband's birthday uh, so it's like I don't know if something happened in, in like it's not oh yeah back in 2013 it's oh yeah when I was in law school 
let me do some uh, uh, that that would have been 2013 okay it wouldn't it would have been like 2009 but uh but yes yeah, so, like i don't i just i'm not good at numbers gotcha so there was great. there was a scenario in which i really did have a folder for people I did. yeah <laughs> i don't <laughs> certainly not a not a root level folder but uh so um so I don't do anything with the PDFs in Obsidian. I could, people do. Um, you you can absolutely embed a PDF uh, open to the, the page you want even in Obsidian. That is a thing that is possible. Mm -hmm. There is even value in it. Uh, you can you can like have it open to a page and then you can have metadata like notes in it if, if you wanted. Like that would be great if the PDF had a bunch of pictures and like charts and stuff. Oh, mm -hmm. um, but I, I, it's not what I'm using Obsidian for. I, I've gotcha. never like needed a, chart and if i did i would probably just take a screenshot but um like there are people for who it makes sense for so i want to mention that it is possible uh but what i do do is uh i will open up the pdf um that is in the correct folder in uh on my tablet or on my phone and i'll annotate and like take highlights and, and dictate and like i'll do all of that um and then it'll shoot back through dropbox i i think everything with dropbox and then on Zotero, what you can do is, hang on, let me make sure that this is the one that's already exported. References, Zotdumps. All right. This is where I put all of, like where they first come and then I move them to wherever is appropriate. Oh, cool. So mm -hmm. origins of agriculture in the Near East I already have. And then I can sort it by which ones I have actually made notes for. So let's see, early pastoral economies. These are my annotations. And so I you got open up this. the PDF, um, yep. like iPad or something. Yeah, and um, I'll, I'll actually do that right now so that you oh. can see the whole process. Okay, Solomon among other things is a ladies man. Myself being a woman who is fascinated with Solomon. Huh. Solomon's figure has a magnetic effect. Okay, this is this is a good one. I'm I'm already yeah. like good job research rabbit. I am intrigued. You have my yeah. attention. That's an intro. Mm -hmm. It is. Women who propel Solomon's reign are not powerful in official terms, but all right, cool. Okay, here we go. I you. This is a good one. Good job, me. I did not pre-plan this. I have never heard of Bath Bathsheba. Uh, whose influence in the kingdom proves to be one of the most pivotal in the course of the history of the Davidic dynasty first appears in the text as a compromised situation. Her fate will either be that of great lady or that of the mother of a potential rival to the king. Okay, hmm. I'm highlighting that because, because I am interested in women of the Bible and I am interested in the kinds of power women had in the ancient world. This is relevant for Phoenicia because ancient Israel is a Canaanite religion, which is like a whole controversy I'm not gonna get into, but for my purposes it's true enough. And and probably relevant to my marriage <laughs> MOC. Okay, so, yeah. You can see that I'm like obviously my PDF viewer does not have interlink capabilities, but I am thinking ahead to how this is going to go into Obsidian. So there's my highlight. I'm gonna close my highlight, make sure that it's actually there because I'm a paranoid soul. Yes, I want to save it. And then the way that I have this set up, I can extract the annotations. So you'll note there are no notes. And then I can manage attachments. And this is uh, one of those three plugins, I think. Yeah, file, yeah, right? right? It's one of, so that's one of the funny <laughs> things with Zotero. This is one of the plugins. After you, you do it, <laughs> then you can right click and then yeah. scroll down and you find manage attachments and then yep. you can hit this magic button. Magic button. And it's doing something. Zot file. Okay. Yeah. Zot so file it was Zot file. That was that was the magic plugin. So now I have the extracted annotations, and you will note it does not recognize the header, but like Obsidian will, so it's fine. It formats it as a quote, and then my annotation is down here at the bottom. Oh, uh, just real fast there. So 
you said it does not recognize the header. So on the back end of Zotero, you added the um, the header like that. So yeah, right. But mainly, like long story short, if you still extract annotations, you'll get them. They just uh, you know they won't have that like the little three header hashtags. Yeah, no, like and I'm, I'm going to show you how to do that as soon as I oh, find okay, it. Okay, cool. <laughs> no, hundred percent. I'm going to show you. I'm going to give you my code. I just have to. Find Ooh. It. So uh, I'm going to search that. There. Okay, here it is. It was in Zot file, that's why I couldn't find it. And this is much more human readable. <laughs> so if you look at the um, the Zot file format, it will let you do some nifty stuff. And I think there is even a way to do it with headers now. I think the most recent update of MD nodes will recognize headers, but uh, Obsidian will recognize three hashtags as a header. So you can worry about that at your leisure. And then I like the header to be the page number because it's helpful when I'm like linking to it, when I'm typing it in, uh, it's a nice numerical sort of unique identifier. And then it'll give me a new line, the block quote, and then the quote, and then nothing else because this is just the highlights. But if I do the dot file dot PDF annotation note, it'll give it its own new line and then just the annotation. And that, these two things right here, you know, like, you know, right there, mm -hmm. that is the format of the annotation highlight. And this part is actually pretty straightforward to change. The, the, um, the P is, is something that shows up on mine. So let me open Zot. It won't like, you know the thing that Windows does where you put it over here and it stays? Isn't that nice? Oh, yeah. It's not doing <laughs> that for me. So if you look, there we go. So if you look, you can see um, it, it, it plops out as P6. So it's uh -huh. page six. So the six is this uh, little percentage symbol, parentheses, page. The uh, This HTML, um, what are these called? The the Bracket? Less than equal to bra yeah, know. they're like pointy brackets. They have a name. Po the pointy yeah. brackets, uh, yeah. P, is it, it's a paragraph, so it makes it a new paragraph. The block quote is uh, the block quote formatting, and then you just have to close the tags because it's HTML. But it will pop out as Markdown in Obsidian thanks to MD Notes. And so this is how I'm getting this format. If you want to use a different format, just rearrange the placeholders and the wildcards. And the the Zot file has all of those wildcards that we talked about earlier. So you could do any variation of this stuff that you want. Yeah. I think there's What's all so neat about that, that is cards. you had the block quote and then right underneath that is, is your note. So, and I think this is so crucial because we're not just highlighting, but we're commenting quickly. I mean, that, that, that was a pretty, pretty insightful comment that you have because you're linking to, you know, notes that you know currently exist, but it could be like, I don't agree with this or I want to look at this more, but what you're doing is, you, you got peanut butter with the highlights and then your notes, your comment, that's the jelly. And, and how great is that to then bring in? Uh, so I just think there's something special with having both. Like if you can get both at the same time that way. And again, it doesn't have to be as advanced as this one single example we're looking at. It could be something super basic, but you're putting a little tether or a, a cockle burr, like something that can bring you back and, and tie you into what that highlight meant to you. Yeah. And in fact, I'm going to tag this biblical because that will be useful for me later. Just, just looking at my note, I was like, oh, I should probably mention that this is all biblical. And I could, I could, you know, do, do tags too, but actually I'm going to, because I talk about dynasty sometimes. And then I can later use that tag uh, to, to plop it into a, like when I'm looking for dynasty stuff. So I, Sorry. To, correct me if I'm wrong, but have we seen now, I'm sure this is the next step that you're about to just say like, next step, but this then goes into Obsidian, or maybe mm -hmm. it already has somehow. No, it hasn't yet. Okay. That is the next step. That is what I was reaching over here to do. <laughs> so MD Notes, which is one of the extensions that you should install, absolutely follow Kat's thing before you watch it. Like, if you haven't done that already, like, I don't know what to, I don't know how to help. But, um, so you can, uh, I'm pretty sure it's, it's, I want to make it as a single file. There are, you, you'll have options. I personally prefer to have it as a single file. So it will open up 
my folder just to confirm. Like if you don't want it to go into your normal folder, you can change it every time. There's probably a way to disable that, but I, I like the redundancy. And then it makes a markdown file magic. So it will create a link to the markdown file. It's opening it, like Typora is my default. Um, ah, that I don't open very often. And you know, that's that's some stuff. It's not very pretty in Typora because Typora doesn't recognize YAML. But in Obsidian, in my zot dumps folder, I now have this. I'm not sure why that did that. And it's not like perfect. I probably should have renamed the title and I would probably, but this is a- There, there it is. is. This is, this error is because I was demonstrating that you can make it a header. That's not its fault. I did that. That's my mistake. But yeah. Cool. It's, and then, you know, there's a little bit of cleanup sometimes. I like to remove the empty lines. There's probably a way to fix that. Mm -hmm. Flow my priority list, but like, it's probably well, we have a to list delete one of, of those. Yeah. Yeah, you can you can probably delete one of the new lines in the content thing. I just haven't bothered. Uh, but I can open the DOI file. Get oh, can the. We go, can we go back? I just want to comment yeah. on how how beautiful <laughs> that that quote box is. Would you, wait, I mean, that's really nice. Uh, definitely. I know you. I think you shared the CSS code yeah. somewhere. I will. I'll give you a link for the for the thing at the bottom. That one is quite nice. But yeah, it's it's handy. Because it just works really well next to your thoughts, you know, we can definitely see the distinction. Yeah, I think it's important to, um, oh, that's funny. Ha! It doesn't change size. Remind me to let, um, remind me to let somebody know about that. I gotta fix that. Okay. Look at that. Do you see that? It doesn't change size yeah, yeah. when you zoom. <laughs> that's funny. I never noticed. Um, yeah, so, and the the site thing is my, my code too. Uh, it wouldn't normally do the pretty mm -hmm. little underlined bar. And I know that a lot of people really hate my font, but it's really similar to my to my actual handwriting, so I find it useful. So usually I will go through and I will like further process this um, by making a heading. Like it's, it doesn't just say the name. So for this case, I would probably do something like Bath Sheba was. And rather than make you sit through me do a whole thing with this, here's one that I have already processed. That's mm, why mm -hmm. I thought I'd already processed this. This one I've already processed. So it is something that I do myself to give these heading titles. And that's sort of the, the atomic part, I guess. Like that's where I get the like small, like this is what this says. This is what this says. Tyrion purple doesn't need as many snails as people think. Here's my proof, but like, here's the, <laughs> here's the TLDR, right? Here's some stuff about silk outside of China. Here's how palace um, textiles were created in palaces, which was specialized much earlier than previously believed. It's not a long thing. It was, it was long yeah. when I read it, but this is all the stuff I care about. It's much more easy to do in this format. Mm -hmm. And then the summary is not the abstract. Right, the abstracts are like always long, it feels like. Maybe I'm wrong. Here's a one sentence summary of the important takeaways. And then I link to the two sort of most important things that I thought were most important at least. Okay. Tyrion purple, this is like, this is sort of the what I learned. Tyrion purple doesn't need as many snails as people think. Uh, do you know it? Uh, you probably don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, bah, bah, bah. I am intrigued though. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Tyre was one of the um, one of the really important cities on the Eastern Mediterranean and their big uh, trade good, historically speaking, was purple, uh, purple dye. So you've, you've, pro you've probably heard of imperial purple and you're probably familiar with the fact that like wearing purple was a sign of royalty. And part of the reason for that is that in the ancient world, um, this like very particular shade of, of purple slash red, it's like Tyrian red, Tyrian purple. It's like a really rich imperial purple color um was was made from like the shells of these tiny snails that that lived in the eastern mediterranean near the city of tyre and they had figured out how to like turn them into dye in this incredibly intensive process mm -hmm. but uh it's like they they recently learned in roughly 2007 so like not that recently but from the perspective of all of the years of history that have that we've had this notion about Tyrian purple 
it doesn't need as many snails as you think because you can sort of like cut the dye. You can like you can. It doesn't have to be pure in order to get the color. Gotcha, gotcha. Very cool. Uh, and yeah. for a long time, they thought, uh, oh, there's a there's a person in this painting that that is wearing a purple dress. So it it absolutely must be that they traded with Tyre and they were very wealthy and extravagant. And that's just like sort of like there are other ways to make purple. And like it just I don't know. So okay, it, this no, is part is of interesting. Yeah, this is part of the debate. Art, yeah, that ties back to art history and you know the use of different things, uh, gold I think or blues even I think there was mm -hmm. a, maybe it's. I'm no expert on that stuff, but same idea that if that color was used, it meant, you know, yeah. royalty, it meant spirituality, it meant something, or I mean, supernatural. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it was really interesting to have the sort of countercurrent in the yeah, information totally. that I have about dyes. And I actually, this was the moment that I put together my MOC. I haven't even made the description yet. Dye is how you color clothes. Don't mind me. And I, I haven't done a lot with it, but I have just enough that it was worth sitting down and being like, ah, oh, what do I know about dye? Because I have written about dye for my newsletter before. And in fact, it was because of Brian Shanks <laughs> that I wrote this newsletter. <laughs> because he has uh, he has custom dyed um, wool gloves. And when I wrote my thing about wool, wow. he uh, wrote back to tell me about his really nifty wool gloves and it inspired me to, to do a little bit more digging into to ancient dyes. So. Very cool. <laughs> How fun stuff evolves. Subscribers email yeah. me and tell me cool stuff and then I find other research about it. And then here we are. Thanks that file. So it's yeah, I don't know, it's just it's there's a lot of interesting knowledge in the world and I try to keep it organized and put it together and make insights and eventually this will probably become something useful and then you know get wrapped into like maybe a book in my, maybe a story I write will have a character who makes dyes professionally. Mm -hmm. One of the other interesting things I learned from this was that textile creation was specialized earlier than everybody thought. We have this notion that guilds sort of came about in the Middle Ages and that in ye olden days, like in sort of the Bronze Age prehistoric eras, you know, everybody spun, like all of the women like sat in their houses and spun wool, but like there was actually a lot of specialization in working together. And we have proof of that thanks to this sort of 2007 dig into to the Minoan island of something. Gotcha. There. There. I learned stuff okay. and it was cool. And the cool part was it took me like no time at all to get all of that into my um, into my Obsidian Vault. I want to be clear, when I first found Obsidian, I was using actual physical books. And I was <laughs> manually typing all of my actual physical annotations. Hopefully you got some value out of this exploration into using a reference manager like Zotero in your knowledge management efforts. If you enjoyed this, like one of the comments below. Until next time, stay connected.